This is a quick tutorial showing you some of the programming features of the Firefly setup program. Bear in mind this was specifically designed for my Firefly star using three stars, 48 lights. So any changes you need, you're going to have to do yourself and more or less look after yourself. But I can certainly help do show how some of the very basic changes can be made. So I've started up uh, the program, which really is just a word program with a form displayed. So I'll close that form, and I want to go into the Microsoft Visual Basic for Applications development environment. In old versions of Word, that used to be on a on a menu tools. Then there'd be a button for macros, Visual Basic editor. With current version of Word, you need to go into the developer tab. If you can't see the developer tab, it's just because it's not selected in your options. It's pretty easy to Google how to turn on the developer tab. Under the developer tab, click on Visual Basic and it'll bring up the Visual Basic editor like so. And here we see the project we're looking at, the Firefly setup. We can open up the forms and the modules that are defined. So under here's all the code, and these are the two forms. The main form is this Firefly one. So I double click on that, and it opens the form here in the right hand side. So now I'll close the toolbox. By the way, if you can't see these two windows here, you certainly will need them, and you can turn them on through the view menu. As you click on any object within the form, it will bring up the properties for that object here on the left hand side. And it's the properties I've used as much as possible to do the programming. So a lot of the things you want to change, you, you can do that just by either dragging and dropping or just changing the properties. Let's say, for example, you've not got a star, you've got a big circle. You're going to have to move some of these items just to get them in the right position. So there I'm um, merrily moving things around. Not a problem at all. This wording is in the way. I will, for now, I'll just move it perhaps to here and uh, make it long and thin or something like that. It's not looking very neat, but it'll do as a start, just to give you an example. Now, if you've only got two fireflies, then my suggestion would be to just get 16 of these and group them to, to the side somewhere and just don't use them. The association between the actual light here and which lighter armor channel and lighter armor unit to go to can be found within this tag setting. So this particular light, which is light TB1, so the number one, this is the first light, is actually assigned to channel to unit 36. So that's the controller 36. Uh, the eights channel on controller 36. This one here, I'll scroll down. This is 36, number 7. This one in the middle here, 36, 3. Now these are all RGB channels, so in reality this is on, on lighter R unit 36, 37, 38. You only have to put the 36 here. I've used quite high numbers here, in my case, because I, I'm just moving them out of the way so it's not interfering with my real lighter armor units. Another change you may want to make is to change these groupings. Changing the text here is, is easy, it's just a matter of changing the text which is here in the caption field. Changing what's actually the button relates to, i.e. which lights does this button relate to, that's done by again looking at the tag. This button 
relates to light number 1, 3, 4, 6, 6 9, 16, 17, etc. So that was light 1 because it had TB1. So all you have to do if you want to group a bunch of lights together is get the numbers of them, number 14, number 8, number 15, etc. Go to the button you want to assign that group to and put a comma separated list at the bottom here. When you save or click the uh, finished button, it's there, all it's really doing is writing to the to the basic uh, to, sorry to the word document. One of the things it writes to the word document along as well as all the sequencing that you've defined is actually a picture of the star itself. So when you open up the last file in Lightorama, the animation is available for the star. The actual animation is done through the XML and I've actually got that as a hidden element. The way to see it is if you make this screen a little bigger, so I'm going to grab here and move to the right a little way, and we can see it here. All, all I've done is I've created a, a dummy label along the lines of these sort of labels which isn't normally visible to the user. However, the text within the label is actually the XML needed to draw the star. So I went into Lightorama, I created the, an animation and I saved it. Then I went, to, went and I opened the LAS file and I extracted the text where it said animation. If I was to, s to replace this with another animation from a different last file, then I could have whatever picture you want. So if you want to redesign the actual picture, that's one way to get it to automatically save it each time the user presses the finish button. That should be enough to allow you to change it for different layout of lights. Now I'll just quickly go into the actual programming behind the form, just in case somebody, for example, wants to add more lights. If in that case they would need to know a little bit about Visual Basic just to be able to add new lights and so on, but just so that you know the basics of it. So I double clicked on one of the components there, double clicked on the finish button so it's taking me to the code which runs when the finish button's clicked. This is taking me to the code, let's go to the top of the code and we see the global variables used. Now bear in mind this was just a quick program I knocked up specifically for me so the comments and so on may not be brilliant. The main two fields you needed are used are fades and colours. Currently we'll, uh, these are an array of 800 elements so the maximum number of steps you're currently allowed is 800. Each time you click next it moves on and fills in the next element in fades and colours. Colours will contain the 48 colours that are currently on in the star. Fades is a string and this string will contain the value in each of the lights 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, up to 9 for each of the lights concatenated into a string so each, each value of fades is a string of 48 characters. The only thing that really fills in these values is when you click next. So the code underlying the next button looks after all the fades and the train movement and so forth. Once you click the finish button, we, we then convert the fades and colours into the actual XML 
that's needed by lighter armor. Okay, a very quick view of how it works. I hope that helps. Obviously, once you've made your changes, you need to save them. File, save. If you quit to back to Word from from the Visual Basic, or click back to Word from the Visual Basic, you could also do the save from here. File save or file save as. And the important thing to remember is you don't really want any text in the document when you save it, because that text will be there next time you open the document. And that's it.